Shetland ponies, uh, if you're down for that trip next week, it's a real highlight. Uh, I was talking to a guest earlier uh, from Virginia where they've got a pony tradition as well. But when we were there about 10 days ago, uh, very lucky on a nice day, we went to see the Shetland ponies and they do it very well. They, they have a lady who has a, a face mic, a bit like this one, who tells you all about them. And if you're going to see them next week, uh, there's a foal being born recently, I think it's eight or nine weeks old. So they've got about 20 of them, it's well worth seeing. But two things I remember about that, you might have seen around the ship where we have a film crew who are making a travel program about, about Viking cruises. And that day they came out with us to see the Shetland ponies and take some pictures of guests meeting them and so on. And I'll never forget this, the, the lady who was doing the commentary, she's standing there chatting about Shetland ponies and how they care for them. And then suddenly there turns up four people from the film crew. One guy's got an enormous camera on his shoulder, another one has a huge sound boom, the third one has some recording equipment, and the fourth one has a spare camera. So they all turn up and the lady said, are you from the film crew? And wonderfully, our Australian cameraman said, no, we've come to worm the ponies. So, uh, but the, the lovely tradition with these, uh, it doesn't happen so much now, but a lot of these ponies used to work in coal mines. And in my part of the world, northeast England, there used to be about 20 coal mines. They've all gone now. You know, power has changed, so we had 20 coal mines. And frequently, little ponies, because of the height, were used down in the mine to, to pull the trucks of coal along before they had the more modern conveyor belts and high quality electric equipment. So a lot of the ponies did that. And the, the reason they were popular, of course, quite short, they can get into a low seam in a mine in a way something like a horse couldn't possibly. But the bit I like is quite often miners in the Northeast and elsewhere, they would work with the same pony for years, literally, and get to know them really well. And the tradition was when a miner retired, he would often take his pony with him. And in their gardens at home, I've seen this, you know, a little retired miner's house and in the garden is the pony he's worked with for 20 years or whatever, making sure he has a really good retirement as well. But the sign of the times, what tickles me, my part of the world, there are a lot of retired miners still, and part of their pension deal, as well as the cash, they get a, a weekly supply of coal, which now comes from either Russia or Poland. Now, most of Northern, e most Northern England underneath it is solid coal, and it is quite comical. You've probably heard the expression, taking coals to Newcastle. Well, now they do. Uh, retired miners' coal comes from there. So if you see the ponies, if you're going ashore next week, do say hello. They're very friendly, and it's a really nice little trip to actually see them close up. Another uh, kind of Norse link, a Viking link, that's the flag of the Shetlands. Very much like the Swedish flag, if you know that one. It's just like that, except they've got yellow where Shetland has white. And I, I chatted to a few other guests who do this. Whatever we do, when we go to a country we haven't been to before, we always buy a flag. And it's a lovely souvenir, isn't it? You get one for $5 or less. And what I like, uh, at home, as you drive into our, our garage, on the rafters we have pinned all the flags of places that we've been, which is now up to about 85, I think. But on a winter's day, you drive in there and all the flags are fluttering, including ones from the Caribbean and lovely warm countries. And we have a Shetlands one, of course, to remind us of being here. And if you look at the flag of the Orkneys, theirs is even more kind of Viking because if you look at that, if you know the flags of Norway, which is uh, largely red with a blue cross, uh, Sweden, as I say, which is yellow, and Denmark, which is red with a white cross, that's just about a blend of the three Scandinavian countries. So if you haven't done that before, start a new hobby on this trip, get yourself a Shetland and Orkney's flag and pin it up at home. But to bring us right up to, nearly there into the, uh, the modern era, uh, Microsoft have a big facility uh, just off the Orkneys called Project Natic. And this is a brilliant piece of lateral thinking. That's a huge internet server. It lives underneath the sea because the experts tell me, and if anybody here is in the business, he might confirm this, that these things put off a lot of heat. So if you're under the sea, of course, the heat's been naturally taken away. But even better, the Orkneys is a big centre for renewable energy. They get a lot of their electricity from the wind or the water. So that thing actually is keeping cool under the sea and getting energy and they reckon that won't need maintenance for about 20, 25 years. But then again, they said that about my washing machine, so we shall see. But uh, Microsoft uh, were very kind as well. I was in touch with them. They sent me that photograph. And again, magical kind of lateral thinking to think of putting that thing into the sea. And there it is being lowered for the first time. And uh, I don't know the exact arrangements, but probably uh, a lot of the servers around here 
will actually be going through that. And it always amazes me the speed of it. I'm from the generation which thought, you know, getting a letter back in a fortnight was pretty good. And I was thinking the other day, I put on social media a picture of me enjoying a pint of Guinness in Dublin. And within a minute, you're getting people around the world, old friends saying, oh, do enjoy, and, you know, the speed of technology. But as I say, that project going in. But one thing I like, uh, we were in Shetland one day, and do you ever see a house and you think, I'd love that one? Presuming it's got good insulation and a good damp proof course. But just living there when you've got the sea, and even on stormy days when you're sitting right there, I kept looking at that and thinking, well, the gutter needs fixing. Can you see near the top? Yeah. The weeds in the gutter, and it's obviously had some water running down, but that's a man thing, isn't it? You probably look at Buckingham Palace and think, well, that needs a little bit of sorting out. But I'd love that place. But let me tell you uh, one final thing. Uh, happily, uh, my wife Joan is travelling with me on this trip and enjoying it greatly. But a little while back, uh, I did a, a cruise at short notice, and the, the cruise line flew me to Venice, and I just did the short leg back to Southampton. And we had builders at home doing a new kitchen, and Joan said, uh, if, I do, if you don't mind, I'll stay at home and supervise the builders and make sure they get the kitchen right. So that was good. So I'm doing this short cruise from Venice back to UK. And of course, with the beauties of email these days, Joan's keeping me in touch and sending me pictures of where the builders are up to. And she said, I really wanted a, a good new mixer tap for this kitchen, so I've got one sorted, uh, invoice attached. And I thought, well, yeah, you know, mixer tap, you're gonna use it 100 times a day, good idea. I was expecting, in American terms, perhaps 100, $150. Uh, the invoice attached was 3250 So for a mixer tap, I said, please send photograph. <laughs> and wine drinkers will have worked out. You've got red on the left, white on the right. And if you juggle it, you get rosé. So that worked. But let me tell you one quick thing finally, because we're just about up on time. I don't know if you're up uh, last evening. Did you see the sunset last night? Wasn't incredible? Uh, just one of those beautiful things. We were up in the Explorer's Lounge, and as it was going down, did you see the lovely ripple up the clouds? And it's, you know, the work of nature sometimes is quite something. Well, the reason it reminded me of something was um, quite often back home, as I said, I live about 250 miles north of London, and I'm often in London speaking to business conferences or after dinner or whatever. And one day, uh, a little while back, I was heading back from London. The train was delayed, various problems. I should have been home late afternoon actually got home about eight o'clock in the evening. So as I went in, uh, my wife's sitting in the garden and our garden face is due west and it had a sunset just like the one we saw last night. So she's very comfortable on a, on a lounger watching the sunset onto the third bottle of white wine. So I sat next to her and started a glass of white wine and gentlemen, you'll know the feeling you get when a little voice next to you says, I love you and I could never live without you. I said, is that you talking or the wine talking? She said, it's me talking to the wine. <laughs> Which puts you in your place, doesn't it? Well, thank you so much for coming along. I have enjoyed your company and look forward to seeing you around the ship. Thank you.